let's talk about another common mod found on Big Muff Pie style circuits, the emitter mod. This one's really simple and only involves messing with two resistors found on this pedal. Before we go any further in this video, I just wanted to note that you can find the Siberian PCB up on our store at www.diyguitarpedals.com.au, which is the PCB used in this demonstration. You can find links for this in the description below. Alright, well with that out of the way, let's begin. The two clipping gain stages of a big muff circuit are tied to ground by the emitter resistors, which on our Siberian is resistors 11 and resistor 16. Uh, these are 390 ohms when built up like how you'd find on a Russian style big muff. Uh, on the New York City ones, you can typically find them knocked down to about 100 ohms. If you were to jumper these resistors, which is basically taking a wire and uh, connecting these directly to ground on these emitter pins of the transistors at these stages, uh, that will increase the graininess of the sound. If you raise the value of resistance, so if you were to take out this R11 here that's uh, 390 ohms and put in something like a, a 1000 ohm resistor, uh, enlarging that resistance will reduce the, the gaininess of the circuit. So I'm going to give you a little bit of warning here. We're going to go into a little bit of electronic theory and a lot of math, but we're going to explain what's going on and then after that we're going to demonstrate. So what we have here is we have a common emitter amplifier on the first clipping stage and also on the second. But they're common emitter amplifiers with shunt feedback. That's what makes them a little bit more stable. So we need to get some terminology understandings here uh, before we go into the math. So one of the terminologies that you're going to see symbolically used is RB, which is for base resistance. Base resistance, if you were looking at this amplifier right here as two halves, base resistance is the back half. The next one is RL, or load resistance, that would be the front half of the amplifier. And then we have RE, which is the emitter resistor, and that's the guy we're going to be plinking with here when we do our mod. We have RS, which is the source resistor, that's the, uh, or series resistor as it sometimes is called, that's the resistance going into the, the amplifier. And then we have RF, which is the shunt feedback resistor, which is this guy up here. Now these are terms that are needed for the upcoming calculations, the voltage shunt gain without feedback, commonly uh, written down as AZ, the feedback of the voltage shunt, which is commonly written as BG, and then you put it all together to come up with the voltage shunt gain with feedback, AZF. So we're gonna do some calculations and see how changing the emitter changes the output gain on the actual sound of the circuit. All right, so this is the first example here where we're gonna take the emitter pins on these two resistors and just shunt them to ground. You can either do this by using a wire that just connects the one end of the resistor down to the other, basically being a zero ohm resistor, if you will. Or if you have zero ohm resistors, they do make those. Uh, you can also shunt these down to ground as well with that. Now, for calculation's sake, I'm going to put the resistance down as one, just because I know that technically a resistor has a time, or a resistor, a transistor has a tiny little bit of resistance going down this way, as well as there is no such thing as a perfect resistor, so there'll always be some sort of nominal value. But for sake of math and getting an idea, we're going to make it one. So to calculate uh, the gain of this circuit. We'll go over what we have that's not going to be changing on any of these mods because we're only going to be changing this one resistor in that case. So what am I talking about here? Well, we need to know what the base resistance is. So the base resistance of the circuit is R7 parallel to R8 parallel to R9. So that comes out to about 8.9K of resistance for the base resistance. Now we need to know the load resistance. The load resistance is R9 and R10. So R9 parallel to R10 is around 11.7K. That's going to be unchanging on this circuit. Uh, we know the source resistance is 10K. We know that the feedback resistance is going to always be 470K. Uh, another thing we can also tell that's going to be on all these mods is the feedback of the voltage shunt, which is basically 1 over R9. So that comes out to being 0.000000212. And that's not going to be changing because that doesn't require uh, R11 to figure that out. Now, let's go over 
the mods specifically, and we're gonna look over what the AZ is, the voltage shunt gain without the feedback, and the AZF, the voltage shunt gain with feedback, that is determinant, or is determined by what the value of R11 is. All right, here's the calculation for the voltage shunt gain without feedback. And as you can see, we got a value of about 104 mega ohms for that. But when we include the feedback of the voltage shunt, that drops it down to a resistance of 468K. If we take the voltage gain of that and we calculate that out, that gives us a voltage gain of 46.8 or around 33.4 dB gain. Pretty impressive. So that's what happens when we shunt the resistor straight to ground. Now let's do the NYC thing and set it over to 100 ohms. Okay, so here we've changed R11 and R16 to 100 ohms. Now technically you don't have to do both of these the same, but I'm just doing this just to illustrate the uh, calculations here. But anyways, so with 100 ohms on the emitter, let's do some calculations. If we take the voltage shunt gain without feedback resistance, that calcs out to basically being around one mega ohm. And then if we include the feedback of the voltage shunt into it, that gives us a voltage shunt gain with feedback resistance of around 324K. Now the voltage gain that that's gonna create will be around 32.38 or about 30 decibels of gain. So we went from 33 and some change down to 30 just by going from a resistance of basically nothing up to 100. So now let's do it the Russian way and see what that does. So here we have the way you would find it on like a Russian Big Muff. So R11 is now 390 ohms and same thing with R16. So what's that mean? Well, if we do the voltage shunt gain without feedback equation again, you're gonna see that our resistance is 267 kilo ohms. And if we include the voltage, or the uh, feedback of the voltage shunt into it, the voltage shunt gain with feedback comes out to being about 170K. Calculate that for voltage gain, and that gives us a gain of about 17, uh, which rounds out to being about 24.6 decibels. So we've now raised it up from 100 to 390, and we lost about close to 6 dB in gain. All right, well, let's just see what happens if we go a little bit higher. Let's put in a, a kilo ohm resistor and see what happens. So R11 and R16 have now been raised up to 1K. If we follow the trend of the last couple examples, you can see that the gain is gonna be going down, but let's see how much. So if we take the voltage shunt gain without feedback, that calculates out to being 104K of resistance, including the feedback of voltage shunt uh, to the voltage shunt gain with feedback, that gives us about 85K of resistance. Calculating out the voltage gain, that gives us 18.6 decibels. So we just lost six decibels by going from 390 ohms up to 1K. All right, well, let's do one more example here, and then I think we've gotten enough of an idea, and then we'll listen to some audio. So now we've raised R11 to 10K and R16 up to 10K. This is gonna be our last stop, and you're about to see why. So if we do the calculations here for voltage shunt gain without feedback, that is gonna put us at about 10.4K of resistance. And if I were to include the feedback of the voltage shunt, getting the voltage shunt gain with feedback, that drops it down slightly to 10.2K. If we do the gain calculation here with that information, that gives us a voltage gain of 1.02 or 0.17 decibels. So we're practically at unity right here. We're hardly getting any, hardly any, getting any gain uh, worth the note to speak of. So if you remember how Big Muff Pi circuits work is there's a issue of input impedance. It's not very good compared to a lot of circuits. But the idea is because we're cascading all these gain stages together, even with the low impedance, we're shoving the signal and amplifying it and shoving it down and amplifying it higher and shoving it down and amplifying it higher. That's what makes the sound of a big muff sound the way it does. So by taking basically two of your gain stages out of the equation because they're not amplifying anything, it gives a very sputtery sound and really doesn't add to anything. 
So not a, obviously not a really good mod, but it's kind of an idea of saying this is the stopping point. Going any higher than this, you're you're going to destroy the circuit uh, audibly. It's not going to sound great. It's going to sound like crap. Uh, but anyways, I, don't take my word for that. Let's actually get some uh, audio samples here and understand from an ear perspective what these mods have just done. Okay. So here we have the DBE Siberian PCB, which again is up on our store if you want to make your own Big Muff Pie. Uh, I have two 100K pots rigged into the resistor positions here for the emitter resistor on both those stages. This one is on the first stage, this one is on the second. Uh, I used 100K just because that's what I had at the time. Uh, I should have used 10K as we've demonstrated with the math, but you'll get the idea here. So right now I have them both set as variable resistors to 0k, so this is what the 0k would sound like. We're going to increase the resistance on the first stage. And now we're going to decrease the resistance. So as you went up, you notice how it got thin. a lot of its sustain. Conversely, let's bring it back up, and now let's mess with the other one. This is the second stage, with its resistance increasing. Notice how the volume also drops with it. Again, kind of gets that, or kind of gets that thin noise. And if we raise the resistance on both, this is where they're both doing that whole. It's not contributing to the circuit, and it's practically killed the fact that it's a big muff. Now it just sounds like a really wimpy overdrive with a huge volume drop. But me, I like giving it just a little bit of resistance on the on both. And that's about it. So there you go. I think that's a pretty nifty little mod that you can do. It's kind of one of those ones that once you find your sweet spot, you're just going to set that resistance and leave it. But either way, it's something that you can change to get it to be your sound. So, I hope you liked this video, and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, press that like button, and press that bell to get further notifications on any videos that we're updating up on our YouTube channel here. Uh, if you could also, check out our, our site, www.diyguitarpedals.com.au, and pick up a PCB. That, that'll really help us with uh, supporting us making more videos and getting out some good content. So, again, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.